Looks like I got a little friend over here. You gotta watch out for guys like that whenever they come over, whenever you start fishing versus leave. Because guys like that, they'll come over and uh, they'll steal your, steal your fish right off your line. I got a brownie that followed that the entire way. Now we'll see what you do. But pick, picked up our first fish. Let's see what that heron does. All right. A little brown took them up. There you go. Wild fish to the net. Well, to hand at least. So the river splits a little bit. You get a nice little shoot here and another small one there. Usually you can pick off one fish in there and maybe one or two in here before we start to get down into the little bit better stretch of water, but we're going to try this prong first. See if we can't pick off a fish in maybe the inside part of the seam. that soft hackled uh, mop so at least got one out of there like we said nice little little brown a couple inches five inches or so off he goes so always always nice to get one out of that shoot if you can get two you're having a good little good little session So I only had the one camera recording this time, so hopefully it got a really good shot of uh, what I just did there to shoot a bow and arrow cast right up by this tree and pluck out this this brownie. Uh, I gotta get him unhooked though. You got it, you got it. Ah, oh, not the stinging nettles. Um, he got it pretty good. Not great, but good. But gorgeous fish. Show them off a little bit, nice and fat. You can. There we go. We're gonna get this guy released. This hole should produce a fish. Nice and soft, slow. Still got the shade from the trees before the sun creeps in. We'll see. There we go. Oh, that's a better fish. Keep that head down. That's a better fish. Keep that head down. Man, it's definitely one of the better fish I've gotten in this section. I'm gonna pop off our backpack so that I can get better access to get this net. There we go. There we go. That's a good fish. That's a good fish.
Alrighty, so that definitely produced the fish that we were looking for. I didn't think it would be necessarily that big, given that this river doesn't always cough up the biggest fish, but, um, you know, what we're looking at is that run with that chute up ahead, it just, it was a little too fast and a little too thin. Um, doesn't mean there weren't fish in it, but we weren't able to, uh, to quite pin them down. And with this, this mop fly, although it's heavy, um, sometimes it doesn't sink the fastest. It gets down with that 3.8 bead, but it kind of almost does better in some of the intermediate water where it's, you know, a little bit deeper and not quite as, uh, as thin. Something, you know, instead of a foot, foot deep, maybe more like, oh, there we go, lost him. Uh, maybe more like a foot and a half, two feet deep. And that's about where that fish took um, similar rock ledge to where the first one was. But we're gonna keep chucking in here and see if we can't, you know, get out one more, even though we just lost the one. But the good news is, is we got the one that was worth it. There we go. Darn. All right, that hook set was right on me. I didn't quite get that in him. First one that I lost just before that, I think was more so a product of, um, you know, kind of knowing that it's a smaller fish and getting his head up right away. But that's definitely something that, you know, as I do guide trips, you know, we talk about what goes into, you know, keeping fish on, not losing them, being able to fight the hook set. Um, that's really the key difference between what I think makes for a good Euro nymphing angler and kind of a, a guy that gets some fish occasionally or just, you know, maybe, um, you know, hooks some but doesn't really land them. That's definitely a key piece. So as I'm out on trips, I definitely try to focus on that in spite of the fact I just lost two right there, which kind of stinks. took an olive waltz and he held on to it because I definitely should have set the hook much much earlier but uh, thankfully we didn't lose him flies already out nice little standard gunpowder brown but the colors are just stunning look at all those red spots simple nothing nothing special but what we did is we basically cast up right up into the head of this run right by the log and um, luckily we're able to pick off two two identical size fish too but he's got a really similar amount of uh, spots as the last guy but not quite as many and a little bit less vibrant but really beautiful fish and two right out of that little chute that really doesn't have much to it. Again, a lot of people would skip right by it and not really bother with it, and I don't blame you, but just understand that you're passing up fish, and if you were to catch two out of that hole, and some days, there's another hit, some days two might be a good day. You know, sometimes you just gotta fish water, it's a little different. All right, so we've got a really nice little run. Probably good for a jig streamer, to be honest. Might be something we clean up with at the end, see if there's anything a little bit larger than average, but really like to pick up a fish or two through here with this waltz. There's one. And the, the great part is too, when you're fishing in water like this, um, you know, the takes are quick. You can read them, but most importantly, there you go. They're, uh, they're all trout, so. You know, if you fish some other sections of the river, sometimes you're dealing with chubs and fall fish and other things that may frustrate you. So at least in here, all brownies for the most part. All right, let's do it again. Getting a little bit of a upstream uh, wind, which is affecting the drift, so. Not terribly, but definitely affecting it. All right, so again, the water is a little fast and um, we're dealing with a little bit of wind. 
and I've got on a size, I believe it's 16 Waltz. Um, I'm almost certain of that with a three, three millimeter bead. So I just want to size it up just a little bit more because of this wind. You can kind of see it blowing the trees around, but also we're dealing with a faster shoot. So let's make a change. Alrighty, so we put on a 3.2 millimeter bead. We got on a um, blowtorch, and the hope is that we can basically stay in contact just a little bit better than we were with the waltz, but also combat some of the the wind uh, that we're dealing with. And there, on the first drift, is a brownie. So always boost boost your confidence when you when you make a change that the first cast results in a really nice fish. So, pretty sparsely spotted brown. Took that blowtorch right away. So, super rewarding. Got two out of that run. That's what our goal was as soon as we stepped up to it. Alrighty, so let's see if we can't try to get one more. I mean, we're always going to try to get one more, no matter what, until the, the, the clock runs out, which thankfully we still got some time. Um, but let's talk about this, right? We ran the, the um, 3.0 millimeter bead waltz right through here, got a fish, first cast, boom, that's great. And then we got hung up a little bit and it, you could tell with the wind and the drifts, I just wasn't getting what I wanted out of it. And if you're not, you have to make some changes. So Joe Humphreys is, uh, is known for a lot of things. A great guy, I've had the pleasure of meeting him, talking with him and even got his autograph that I'm really excited about um, on his book, Trout Tactics. But the point is, He's quoted as saying the difference between a good angler and a great angler or an average angler and a good angler is one split shot, something to that effect, right? So here's what we did. We're running the 30 millimeter bead. We get a couple drifts through, we pick up a fish. Great, that's nice. Get feedback, but I could tell with the way the cider was going, it's not quite doing what I need. So we put on a 3.2 millimeter bead. We run that thing through and on the first drift in the heavier part of the riffle, boom, there's a fish and we're good. And I still have room to work out and get close to that structure where I think a better fish might be hiding, but then also where uh, just other fish may be hiding. So that's, that's definitely exciting. So in general, whenever you're out on the water, you know, sometimes it's not always the fly, although those things matter. Um, it could just be the size size of your bead if you're uh, euro nymphing or nymphing in general and you're just not getting down there he is there's another one so good little good little piece of advice there that now you've seen on camera certainly certainly can work in a run that i had already put some some drifts through a really pretty fish he's gonna be gorgeous when he gets older but let's take his barbless hook out of him Good to see that blowtorch is working well. That's always a fan favorite on the website. A lot of people order those blowtorches and give positive results. Haven't fished them as much this year in spite of the fact that last year they were just absolutely killer. Um, but I'm glad to say that they're working right now even in the dead of summer here in this run. There we go, three. And I got hung up on a tree too. I do not deserve that fish, but we're gonna take it. And that'll be the fourth fish out of that hole mostly because of the changes that were necessary to, you know, make things happen. So we'll see if we can't pick up any more, but that alone has made the day right there. The blowtorch change with a 3.2 millimeter bead, getting it done. Another one for the blowtorch. <clears throat> Turned out to be a pretty successful day here on this uh, Friday morning. So another good fish. <clears throat> Yep. 
All right, let's try to pick up another one here. That wind's howling again. It's not too bad though, it comes and goes. But definitely playing a role. There we go. He hit the flip stick. Ooh, got ourselves a little rainbow. Thought I had one of these earlier. That's cool. So I've definitely talked with people that know the situation, but um, these little guys, which I'll get him a better shot on the big camera, um, these little guys are not wild fish. That's a good little fish. About the average for what I would want out of here. And he was in a tight little riffle, so that's even better. Always fun when you can get him in spots that are technical and not easy. So basically, you know, you've got faster shoot, you've got a um, uh, faster run over there. So basically we just picked apart the middle where it's still got decent current, but just not quite, quite as good or as fast as uh, the rest of it. So it's always smart to try to find something where a fish can, again, expend the least amount of energy to get the most amount of, most amount of food. <laughs> 